Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself, Marta, where we have a first impressions review for the first time in a little while. And as you can see, we are having a look at Monster Train. Now, just as a quick disclaimer, I did get a code for this game from the developers. This isn't a sponsored video, but I did get this game for free. So let's run through the settings, shall we? First of all, so as you can see, you've got quite a few options here. Uh, you can only go up to 60 as far as I can tell. There's no way to get past that. You've also got the usual window borderless or exclusive and resolution options, of course. And different audio sliders is always nice to see. And it does have a few different game speeds, but you can actually um, tweak that in game. We'll get to that in a second. So as you can see, quite a bit of customizability, but this is an indie game. So obviously it's not going to be too expansive but you can rebind pretty much everything which is nice but to be honest i play this game pretty much exclusively with the mouse but i'm sure the pro players that will inevitably come out of this game will not do that so let's jump in and i can explain what on earth monster train is i'm going to start a new run yes that's fine okay Oh, by the way, guys, um, just as a quick aside, I am using RTX Voice for the first time. I think I've got it set up right, uh, so there shouldn't be any weird clipping or anything like that, but let me know in the comments if it needs to be tweaked at all. Anyway, so, <coughs> essentially the plot of this game is you have got, like, the last flame of hell, and you need to get it back to somewhere to basically revitalize hell, because it's all, like, frozen over and everything. So you have you start with a couple of clans, the Hellhorned and the Awoken are the two that you start with, but you can unlock several more. As you can see, I have several unlocked. I've unlocked the Stygian Guard and the Umbra I literally just unlocked on my last playthrough, but as you can see there is one more left to get where I have to kill 1300 enemies. So you select your starting clan and your allied clan. So your primary clan affects your hero card and obviously the cards that you get and the allied clan, you just get some of their cards as well. So you can get a bit of a mix and they definitely do have some synergies together. So I've never actually played as the Umbra before and I really like the Awoken as a class, as a clan, I should say. But let's get cracking and then we can explain the game itself. Alright, final boss, Sh Seraph the Chaste. The incarnation of Hell's Greatest Foe has the power to cleanse all units of effects which don't benefit Seraph. So he's going to get rid of our buffs. Alright, so this is the sort of like map screen of the game. This game is very Slay the Spire-ish in a lot of ways, as you'll see when we get to the main game. But it also has some very interesting tower defense elements. So, as you can see, we've got an upgrade to our champion right off the bat. Okay. Gorge, that's a new mechanic. Triggers when a unit eats a morsel unit. So there's other units that you can summon to eat and it'll get more powerful. Or trample. When attacking, excess damage is applied to the subsequent enemy unit. Hmm. I've never seen trample before. That sounds interesting. So you might be wondering what this thing is at the top. That's basically the capacity that the unit takes up. We'll get more into that later. Alright, so we have a artifact or a relic as it would be in Slay the Spire. So we get 15 attack to our pyre, which is what we need to protect. Or gain 7 energy on the first turn of battle. I'm going to go with that because 7 energy, we're most likely not going to be able to really use all of it. If we had an artifact that could hold over energy, that would be nice, but obviously we don't. I could take it on the rough chance that I could get it, but anyway. So you can do optional trials to get better rewards. I'm not going to do that for this video just because I want to show you guys the vanilla game and purist. Alright, so we're finally into the game screen. So basically what we have is a train. There's the pyre and it, you, I guess you can see sort of what I'm talking about with the tower defense elements. You have different levels and you have to protect each level so that enemies don't get through to the pyre. Now the pyre isn't helpless which is nice actually. It does attack but only has a pool of 80 HP to start with. So basically we just need to delay, 
get down the enemies as much as possible, if, if not kill them. So, we need to summon cards. Uh, summon, or use cards to summon units. So, obviously we're going to summon this big old boy. So, add a common or uncommon monster to your hand. Alright. So, Eaton. Alright, so when he eats this, he will get one energy. Alright, we can't really do much else, so I'm just going to use these restores for not really much reason. Because why not? Alright, I'm going to turn the game speed down a little bit so you guys can see what's going on. Didn't realise it was cranked up so high. Yes, as you can see, game speed normal, fast, and ultra. I'm just going to keep it on normal for now. And if you want to have a look what is up ahead and kind of plan, you can absolutely do that, which is pretty nice, I will say. Alright, so this dude we want to kill because he gives us 50 gold. So we're just going to start off with these. Every class starts off with these trash train stewards. One, f five, eight for one energy. Not great. So we're just going to summon him just so he will kill them. So basically how it works is the enemies will go from right to left and we'll kind of go from left to right in terms of how we attack the enemies. But because this dude has trample, both of these dudes are dying. Normally only this front unit would die because I would just attack once and that's it. So there are ways to make one unit insanely powerful in this game. Let's try a new morsel, shall we? Eater gets plus three attack. Sounds pretty good. So you may notice on each of the floors that there is this. This is the capacity that I was talking about earlier. And as you can see, Train Steward takes up two capacity. So I can summon two Strain Stewards here. Now because this unit is so huge, he takes up almost all the capacity on this floor by himself. So that's pretty interesting. And it does seem like we're going to have to upgrade our capacity later. Oh. He's a big old boy. <laughs> He's a big old boy. Alright, a brief respite, so we're just gonna heal up. So, plus one health and damage shield one, or plus three attack. See, damage shield is actually really interesting, because you can see it nullifies the next source of damage. So, if you have a unit that was otherwise going to be killed, you can save it and make it stick around longer, which is really, really important when you get into later uh, areas and the, the enemies are really strong. And obviously, there's the boss to worry about as well. Uh, I think we can get, just get plus three strength on this early uh, level, though. What's interesting, though, is I did actually watch some other content of this. Um, I don't necessarily have to give the morsels to... The Umbra uh, characters, or, or uh, units, sorry, should I say. So I can just buff a train steward if I really want to. Now I do wonder who's going to get this. Oh, it's you. Okay. So one thing I really like is like how much information the game actually gives you. So you can see that I'm going to get plus one health. So it does try to make it as clear as possible, which is really important because there's a lot of effects going on later on in the game. Like, for now you can see that for the moment my car uh, unit has a X over their health, which means I'm going to be killed. And I don't know if there's really much I can do about that, to be honest, given the hand I just got. I mean, I can heal. All right. Now I'm living, and the boss and this other character is dead. All right. Let's see if we can get a morsel, though. Game one energy, not really what I'm looking for. Plus two and lifesteal one. A unit with lifesteal attacks, it restores health equal to the damage dealt. Nice. So, yeah, as this is kind of what I was saying. This game is very Slay the Spire esque, but it also has tower defense elements, and the cards kind of give me Manage, Magic the Gathering vibes a little bit. In, in Slade Spy, you don't play units in the same way. You are the unit and you just place attacks and spells, powers and stuff like that. So it is very different, but it definitely has similarities, obviously. Alright, so. Plus one capacity on the floor. That could be really good. Or deal three damage, add two uncommon or rare morsel units to your hand. Or apply lifesteal three and ember drain two to a friendly unit. Ember drain literally takes away energy that seems very risky why would you do that i don't know the, i don't know the use case for that i'm kind of torn between these two 
plus one capacity could be really nice, but this is also pretty nice. Hmm. You can make an argument for either, really. We're having pretty bad capacity problems at the moment, so I'm going to go with that. Alright. And here's our ally plan. Alright, so we can get plus three, plus three, regen five, or we'll restore two health to friendly units and deal two damage to enemy units. I really love Glimmer. It's such a great card for one energy. Especially because you can buff it later and we'll get into that in a sec. Um, it's a really great card. I'm going to take that. I always say Glimmer pretty much whenever it turns up because it's great. Especially early game for clearing out some of the like low level mobs and stuff. Alright, so now we have our first sort of choice in path. So as you can see we have upgrades to units and an Umbri unit. Or we can get upgrade to magic, or spells should I say, and get an Awoken unit. We don't really have any spells that are worth upgrading right now, so I'm just going to go this way. Uh, actually, I'm just going to leave real quick. Hang on. I'm just going to grab the unit first. Alright, so. Crucible Collector, Gorge, gain life still one. Or, Morsel Master, when you summon a Morsel unit on this floor, create a copy. Hmm. Now that could be a really interesting synergy if I were to, was to have enough capacity with that big old Penumbra main hero unit that I have. Because if they were on the same floor together and then I was summoning units, yeah, you can actually go over capacity if you kind of trick the game, but I'm not going to go into that. It's a bit, it's a bit inside baseball. <laughs> but yeah, you can basically move units between floors and oh, go over the capacity, and I'm assuming the Morsel Master would allow you to do the same thing. That's interesting. But I don't think we have the capacity to make it work right now, so I'm going to go with Crystal Collector. Okay, so here we have our upgrades and our amazing mech cat, which I just love. Alright, so we can remove a card, which I think I'm definitely going to do. We can probably get rid of a Restore now that we've added Glimmer. And we can give a unit plus 25 health, plus 5 attack and 10 health or endless endless basically means that once a unit is killed it just gets shuffled back into your deck rather than being removed forever so it's pretty nice if you've got a strong unit uh sure and we can't afford anything else all right let's go next battle so i think you guys are getting a real feel for this game it's really really interesting i'm really enjoying it i have to say i love the art style and the, the music is really cool as well and everything is just very well presented and well made i don't really have any big complaints about the game to be honest um uh yeah screw it let's go with the let's go with the trial it's not too bad i don't want extra monies <laughs> all right so here we go Uh, if I summon you, are you going to die? 5, 10, 15, 20... I don't know actually, are you? Yes, I was... How about I put a train suit in front of you to take some damage? There we go. Train strides are trash. We don't want them. <laughs> I like how the little morsel got an attack there, that was pretty nice. Oh. Alright. They're going to do some damage to the pyre, but it's not that much. Who cares? We do need to put some damage, uh, some units on this floor if we can. Train steward, not really what I was looking for. To be honest. Alright, let's just put a bunch of morsels up here, shall we? Alright, we're not going to be able to get this dude. He's going to get away when we lose out 50 gold, which sucks pretty bad. But it is what it is. Is what it is, unfortunately. As you can see, like you can really build like a big old powerful unit that's like, just like stomping around, annihilating everything. Basically, it's a uh, pretty fun. Not gonna lie. All right, uh, game one energy. Sure, you can have that. Given that you get life steal from that, it's pretty nice. So, how does the life steal actually work? Let's see, hang on, if I can just, there we go. Life still. oh, for the next, okay, so if it's life still 1, it's just for the next attack. Life still 3, next 3 attacks, okay. That's what I mean about how much information the game gives you, which is really, really needed. Like, for this guy, you can see he's the boss, so he's relentless, which basically means that he's not going to move from this room until 
my character is dead. So it's not. You, I mean, obviously you can try and kill him here if you want to, but it's more on the average playthrough about doing as much damage to him as you possibly can so that the upper floors can kill him. I mean, if you can build like a absolute maniac of a unit and, and kill him, then fantastic. But in this case, I don't think we're going to get there. To be honest, so I just think uh, let's put more capacity on this floor. Ugh, energy, really? Not really what I'm looking for. I might as well heal this guy because there's not really much I can do for this guy on the bottom floor that I can think of anyway. So I just have to let him do his thing. Unfortunately, the boss is still pretty low. Like he's over half dead. So if we can just do well on this floor, then we're good. And we already are. You can see the boss is already dead. But of course, we can still have some fun. If I can get a decent morsel, that'd be great. The energy? Go away. Um, sorry, I was just trying to check something. Alright, that was easy. Done. And we got an extra 75 gold for doing the trial, which is nice. All right. Did we take that Antumbra Assault earlier? I honestly can't remember. No, we took the prism. Okay. So we're going to take that this time because it's it's pretty nice from what I can tell. All right. So Glimmer again, not necessary. Vine Grasp could be useful. We are having problems here in the back line. Or in, Enhance the unit with plus eight, minus two. I think if we're going to go to big stompy unit, strap. That's the card we want. So guys, I mean, I have to say, like, I'm kind of just like trying to explain this game to you because I really, really enjoy it. It's the sort of game that it just kind of hits that real like nerd spot, you know, but it's that sort of game that really makes you think, oh, just one more turn or just one more match, just one more, just one more. And then before you know it, two hours have passed. And I've, I've been playing this game for a while and I haven't actually won yet. I've gotten to the last boss multiple times, but he just kicks my but every single time so i really really love this game if you're into your card games if you're into slay the spy or any sort of similar games to that and if you like your roguelites then this game is definitely for you because obviously you do start every time but you unlock new cards new um artifacts new classes obviously as you go so you definitely have that sense of progression and the games themselves are so fun it it doesn't really bother me that i start from scratch like a lot of roguelites, I don't have the motivation to carry on after I've been killed because I feel like I haven't actually achieved anything. But in games like Slay the Spire, Dead Cells, and this game, I really feel like I'm actually making progress, getting learning, getting better, as well as actually unlocking new stuff as we go. So I'm going to show you guys one more, and then I think I'm going to call the video because I feel like you've gotten a good enough impression of the game. If you you know it already, if you can enjoy it, I really really do. But uh, let's let's upgrade our actually wait 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 wait. Let's get a unit first and then upgrade. Alright, so we could do with a big tank, I think. Let's have a look. Actually. No, actually, I think what we're kind of lacking is damage. I don't know about this three health. I can't really protect it to keep it alive, is kind of what's bothering me here. Uh No, I'm gonna go with the tank, I think, just because I like to have a couple, a couple of tanks in the deck just, just in case. They're kind of necessary to soak up damage. Alright, so we've got random events here. The remains of Armageddon litter the icy landscape. Both winged and hellborn lie peacefully in their final resting place of snow. The train finally comes to a halt near fallen soldiers from both sides. Did they really believe in what they were doing? Was either side justified in this fight? But it's all irrelevant now. Survival is the only thing that matters. Besides, the weapons they've left behind may prove to be of some use in the battles ahead. What do you salvage from this ancient fight? Okay, so we get the most blessed sword. X spends all of your remaining ember. Okay, so pier purge and piercing. So purge is not... It's similar to Exhaust from Sailor's Buyer, except it's for the rest of the run, not that match. So, Piercing ignores shield, so 10, 10x damage to enemy units. Holier Shield, apply 3x damage shields. Or the Skull, kill a non-boss unit. Ooh. Mm. 
They're all purge, is the thing. I feel like the shield is more useful. But I might be wrong, I've never seen this event before. <clears throat> Alright. Next boss. Monster train, let's go. <laughs> Alright. Explosive sigil. Enemy unit still one damage to the front unit on death. Alright, so this is why you need the tank stuff like this. Or spells to take them out before they get the chance to. Alright, so Oh she Oh no. I just realised I can't put these two together. That's fine. I'll just do it like this instead. Ugh, one energy, not really what I had in mind. Uh, I don't really want to play because it's going to take 10 damage straight away. I guess I'll put him up here. Oh, 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 my poor tank. He's not doing very well. Alright. You can. Oh, wait, no. Shh. Damn it, I'm really having capacity issues already. <laughs> God damn. Okay, let's just put train stewards up here. Heal you a little bit so you're not dying. There we go. I'm sorry that you're taking such a hit. I don't really do much about it, unfortunately. Oof. Just barely survived. Alright. Let's put some more capacity with you. Let's glimmer. So we are living now. Uh, gain energies again. Uh, can't really do much else, unfortunately. We have to kind of let this one play out. And I'm going to speed it up to speed 2 now that you guys have a bit of a more uh, familiarity with what's going on. Okay. Still 3 damage. Let's get that. Eater gains plus 3, plus damage shield 1. Is that going to trigger... Uh, I don't know when that's going to trigger, to be honest. No, it's just going to soak up damage. It's kind of irritating. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I mean, even healing you is not going to save you, unfortunately. I just kind of have to accept that you're going to die. So let's heal you a little bit. Uh, okay, energy. Not what I want. Alright, let's buff you and put you up there. Alright. A card to trigger the eating before the end of the turn would be nice. I think that would actually help us out a lot here. Okay. Now I need to be a bit careful. You are living, which is good. Let's give you a morsel, shall we? Put a train sword in front just to protect you and buff you up some. So as you can see, we are damaging the boss before he actually comes down and starts attacking us, which is really nice. And that's actually a pretty good strat for the later on bosses that have pretty insane health pools, to be honest. But obviously whether or not you can do that is another matter entirely. Alright, so now he's down. We can actually start this for real. But he's already pretty hurt, which is nice. And this guy is just going to come back. Now we can't really do much about him dying, unfortunately. We do need more units really badly, actually. So I think the main thing to do is to buff you. Buff you. Oh, I don't have energy, never mind. All right, so this this big old boy, he's, he's still going strong. He's still going strong. We're still doing pretty not bad damage to the boss there. So now that floor is locked off to us, but well, we can 
summon this guy and at least let's get some rare ones, shall we? Two and life still one. I mean, because the eating triggers, I don't know if it's worth it to put it here. I mean, he's not dying now, so actually that was worth it. Absolutely was worth it. Right, let's just summon you uh, and then heal you for no reason. All right, so I think we've got this in the bag, guys. In the bag. And boom! Get out of here! Alright. Let's see. Return consumed morsel units to your hand. That could be good. Consume, draw a unit and enhance it with plus 20, plus 20 and cost zero. Consume, apply, trample. I love all of these. Channel Song though is so good. I take Channel Song every time I see it. Because it's just ridiculous. Alright. Uh, let's have a look. Hang on. No, we do need units pretty bad. So I'm trash. Give the animus of will because we can buff it with the morsels, and then we 1,000% need capacity. All right. That's it, guys. I think I'm going to call it there for this video. I feel like you've got a good impression of Monster Train. My first impressions is that it's really well made, the music is great, the graphic style is cool, the game mechanics are really interesting and well fleshed out. Uh, the game definitely kind of eases you in and all of the sort of tool tips that it gives you really help you sort of understand. And it's just fun to play, it's just really, really fun. So if you're into Slay the Spire, Slay, Slay the Spire, excuse me, that sort of game, I would definitely recommend Monster Train to you. You can find a link in the description below this video if you wish to give it a look-see. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.